Hello everyone, it's been a while since my last video. Just want to quickly show you my new setup to measure capacitor thrust caused by quantized inertia. This is my new setup. Uh, my previous setup had a lot of uh, variable readings, so I built this case around it now with a lid on it uh, that will prevent any wind impacting it. Uh, on top of that, you see these little puddles, they're actually gallon stand that I made myself, uh, which is a metal that stays liquid at room temperature. That way the connect connecting wires won't uh, interfere with the readings uh, either. And um, yeah, there's a higher precision scale it's on. And uh, here's my high voltage power supply. Uh, it, it just has a flyback transformer in there and uh, not too much crazy stuff. Uh, we'll probably be putting around 4 kilovolts on this. It is uh, a 15 micron Kapton dielectric. And yeah, I kept this one really simple. I, I had other ones that I insulated, and but I spent so much time making them each time that uh, yeah, if I put a little bit too much voltage on, they would break and I would have to remake it. So I kept this one simple with uh, all the tape off because yeah, the, the, the tape doesn't do too much with this high voltage anyways. Uh, one last thing I want to show is that I was using um, aluminium capacitors, but you see it uh, got the contacts were corroded away by the gallon stand because they react together. So uh, I switched to copper now. Um, yeah, so uh, let's uh, take some reading, see what happens. Okay, the connections have been made. Let's turn on the power supply. We see the scale is at 14.83, and then I'll start turning up the volume or the voltage. I'm sorry, and we'll see. It's at two kilovolts, four, five kilovolts. We don't see. Well, we see it's it's dropped about till fourteen seventy. So that's definitely something. So we'll turn the power supply off. And yeah, you see it stays there. So in the paper, it mentions that the reaction keeps going while the voltage difference is still there. So let's try to short it out and see if it does anything to the scale. So I connect one wire here, another one here. Oh, that was definitely a little shock. So it equalized, but the scale pretty much stays the same. So let's try to change the polarity. Change the polarity. A look. Uh, so 14, 6, 7, I turn on the power supply. Let's turn this, start turning this up. 14.67. Another 2 kilovolts. 4 kilovolts. 5 kilovolts. And it stays exactly the same. Hmm. So, as you just saw, the results are not incredible yet. But the theory of quantized inertia is sound and proven, so there must be things I can do in my experiments to get better results, so I'll keep working on that. Let me introduce you to my new setup. We have a plexiglass container to minimize interference of wind and draft and stuff on the hanging capacitor. It's about 780 picofarads. <clears throat> there are, um, it's made of um, copper foil. I cut into strips, which are the lead wires. The reason for this is I'm going to be switching this circuit really fast. And if you use thin wires as lead wires, 
um, the impedance will be immense. So you want to have <coughs> a large surface area for these fast moving pulses. So that's why I use flat lead wires. Um, this is my ultra fast uh, gallium nitride um, fat that is uh, on there. Uh, this is a board that I designed myself. It can switch in about seven nanoseconds. So that is to uh, yeah, move this pulse as quickly as possible. Move these electrons as fast as possible. Uh, that's my high voltage power supply. It's set to a very low value of about 510 volts. And that's just my regular power supply to power the rest of the board. And there is one um, capacitor there which is about 7500 picofarads so about 10 times uh, the one that's there um, because um, you want to have some sort of a sawtooth type wave going on because you want to discharge rapidly but you want to charge slowly so that's also why there's a resistor here high voltage resistor so that the charge comes into the capacitor slowly and then when we discharge we discharge rapidly so then you get a unidirectional um, movement of charge, uh, at least mostly. And then I have this little button, and when I push it, uh, you'll see the voltage drops because it empties the capacitor. So that's the plan. I'm gonna push this button, and then we're gonna see if the capacitor moves. So unfortunately I wasn't able to see any movement in the capacitor plates. I do attribute uh, some of that to maybe uh, the fact that more power is required, a higher voltage differential. Um, that's why Master Evo, who used the Spark app, was able to see uh, interesting results. I will put a link in the description to that. However, I also believe that when I um, looked at the scope shots, uh, that there is not a unidirectional movement of charge when you uh, rapidly switch a um, fat, a gallium nitride fat in this case. Uh, you see there's a little peak going back up and that before it goes down again. And there was also some resonance th or there, yeah, so, so a little ringing. Um, so all of that probably contributed um, to the poor results, this experiment. Um, I'm sure there are ways to engineer around this. Uh, I unfortunately at this moment lack the time to really pursue that, but uh, that's why I do want to put this out there. Hopefully someone else can continue this journey. Um, also very exciting that yesterday on the Transporter 13 mission of, with SpaceX, the Ivo quantum drive was launched into space. Hopefully that will uh, have positive results and will show that quantized inertia uh, is able to produce trust in the vacuum of space. So uh, very exciting stuff. Um, hopefully someone can uh, take the baton from me and uh, continue this research and I will dive back in as soon as I have more time. Good luck.